So I did a short on how to make this little preamp, which I previously used in a Boba Fett build. And it was directly connected to an amplifier. But right now I'm looking at the preamp by itself. And so I did a short on that. And somebody asked me to uh, try and make a longer video, um, actually explaining it, I guess, more in depth. Um, so that's that's what this is. So we're starting off with, um, for a, so for a preamp, we've got our mic. We've got the mic has a preamp on the board. This is um, this is a Max 4466. Um, you can buy them through Adafruit or Amazon or whatever. Um, you can buy them in bulk on Amazon and uh, get them a little cheaper. Um, but anyway, uh, if you want the uh, spec sheet, go to Adafruit. Uh, they've got a great spec sheet on there, and I'm going to give you some of the information from that spec sheet, which would be helpful if the Amazon sellers would actually include it, but they don't. Um, so anyway, we've got a mic. Uh, we've got whatever wiring you need. Um, we've got a 3.7 volts uh, LiPo battery. A.K.A. lithium polymer. And then we've got a resistor. This is a 4.7 million ohm resistor. And then a 3.5 millimeter mono audio connector. So you can actually take an old cord and cut it or, and then, you know, it depends on if you want to solder or not. But anyway, you get the concept. It's wiring, it's um, a microphone out, um, or you can, you can wire it to a stereo out if you want to twist the stereo wires together. But anyway, anyway. Um, so this is it. It's pretty simple. Um, these come in a, in a bag um, with just the microphone and this little prong thing. I, I forget what they're called. Doesn't matter. Anyway, I, I went ahead and I soldered mine in. Um, you can do it either way. If you if you wanted a permanent thing, you might may want to actually just directly solder wires on. But right now, I'm just using this for testing equipment. So I'm I like the simplicity of this and being able to test different things. Let me just explain a little bit about this mic. So it's a Max 4466. It's an electric mic. It's 20 to 20 kilohertz. Um, so and it's it includes the preamp. So before I go any further, what's a preamp and why do I need it? You do need it. If you've got a microphone, it has to go through a preamp um, because essentially uh, an amplifier will not see it. It's so low in volume coming directly from a mic that the amp thinks it's just noise and it ignores it. So it's below the noise floor, so it ignores it. It's basically at what's called, you know, in signal theory and stuff, it's called mic, mic level. So it's a very low signal um, and you need to get it up to a line level signal which is above the noise floor and it's something that an amplifier will accept and then it will amplify because you can amplify this a billion times and you'll still get nothing because it's below the noise floor and it's ignoring it so um, if you've tried tried it out trying to collect connect mics directly to amplifiers and it's been in vain, it's because of that. Um, so you've got to have the preamp. So anyway, more details on this. It's uh, 2.4 to 5.5 volts. Is what you can power it with. And that's through the VCC in the ground. VCC is positive, ground is negative. With the 3.7 volts, uh, I'm in the middle with uh, LiPo. Let's see, it's got a 46 decibel gain. Um, and I'm not sure how that re relates in relation to, there's a little like screw knob on the back that's kind of a dial where you can dial it up and it says it, the gain, it's a gain knob and it's between 25 and 125 times um so i'm not sure where 46 decibels if that's the max end or if that's the middle or average or whatever but um 46 decibels is um what i understand it's it's putting out it does full audio range and it's supposed to be good for noise canceling um so background noise it's supposed to be good at, at keeping it out um, I have compared this to other mics. It's decent, but, you know, some of the um, mics that come with personal amps and stuff, I find sound a little better. But anyway, for just a few bucks with a preamp, you can't beat it. The cool thing about it is if you like another mic better, take a look at the back. This is a preamp board, and the only thing that's a mic about it is the fact that it's connected right here. You can uh, solder that bad boy off, and you can solder in whatever you want. But yeah, you could you can easily pop it off and keep this as a preamp because the preamps out there are, are huge and a lot of them you have to go from these bulky one quarter inch connectors or an XLR connector down to a 3.5 millimeter connector into a bulky device that you just don't want to have to deal with. And this is much smaller. Without further ado, let's test this thing. Again, all, all the soldering I've done in this concept is just this into the board. I got my VCC, I've got my ground. VCC is positive, ground is negative. Notice this goes all the way through. What I did was I put the long side through the board so I could plug into the back side too because I'm gonna to need to reuse that ground 
on my audio out. So um, here it goes. So this, always make sure that your positive and your negative are aligned. If you smell smoke, it's because you put them in backwards. And typically, these things are pretty forgiving. Uh, if you get that hint of smoke or it does a little puff out of it, if you unplug it quick, typically it's it's still will seem to work fine. Um, so just disconnect it quick um, and just keep in mind, you know, where you're plugging what. Okay, and you'll see that I've already got this plugged in. So let's, let's see. This is, I've got my negative going to my negative and to my positive. This 3.5 millimeter connector with the screws. This is just something that I use. It's super handy for testing things out. But again, if I was doing something like built in a helmet or whatever, I'm going to use something more permanent. I'll probably cut a 3.5 millimeter connection cable in half. Uh, you can buy cords with the ends already cut off, but I mean, I have plenty of those around, um, be it stereo or mono. Um, but yeah, this is mono because it's mic. Okay, so if you do only have a stereo cord, you can take this. You can see I chopped off the end on this one, and uh, the difference is... So the stereo cable has a tip ring sleeve, and the mono cable has a tip and a sleeve. And this is basically the positive is going to the tip, and then this is your, your ground, and then this is your positive. Well, with this, you've got a left channel, a right channel, and a, a ground. I think that's why they say the uh, left will be your mono. If you do have a mono device, it'll say left or mono. But either way, um, so then it'll typically have a white and a red. I think this one actually has a blue and a red, but these are really some kind of funky cables. Um, but anyway, so what you can do if you're using a stereo rather than a mono, go ahead and twist your grounds together. You, you strip your wires, twist the grounds together on the wires. It doesn't have a sheath around. It doesn't have a rubber sheath. It'll be next to the item that typically has a rubber sheet. These are actually interesting in that they're um, just plated rather than uh, rubber sheath around them. So I had to, I actually have to um, use some sandpaper to uh, get to the, get to them rather than something else. So this is kind of a, I wouldn't probably use this in, in design because it's just very thin, flimsy wires, uh, lower quality. But anyway, conceptually, this is what you do. So now I've got the great, the, I've got the two cables. I've twisted together the grounds on it, and now I've got the, I've got the white and the, and the pink. I think is typically how it ends up. This one's blue and red, whatever. The white cable is left channel, and the red cable is right channel. Since the left is the mono channel that goes to the tip, that's where you're going to want to wire your mic. Then it should work just fine whether you probe it into an auxiliary input or a in mic input. Want to only put it into an auxiliary input? You could twist the wires together and make it go to both channels. Although if you ever did have to put it into a mic input, it may or may not work appropriately depending on how the mic input is wired. Of course, when you do this, you'll want to have um, uh, put some heat shrink over this. And if you don't have heat shrink, you can always just take um, uh, electrical tape and then just wrap it up and keep these wires separate. So yeah, that's how you do it if it's stereo. Anyway, I'm not doing stereo right now. I'm doing it this way. So I've, I've got this already. Um, and you'll notice I've got this resistor. So what's the point of this resistor? This uh, gets rid of the squeal. And I'm going to give you an example of why you do not want to deal with it without the resistor. So other folks posted in uh, some, some comments in one of my previous videos, they were like, you know, I, I was messing around with this mic for a long time and was fed up with it. And was uh, surprised that you got it to work and just to know that it was a resistor, uh, something that simple um, was good to know, but uh, you know, it's a frustrating process because it didn't make any sense. But anyway, again, let's plug this back in because it fell out on me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna plug this in. Um, so again, this is my audio out and I've got a single out and then there's also a ground next to it. And I'm gonna use that ground again, but I'm gonna use it on the back side. I'm gonna make sure I don't connect to the, to the power um, cause I don't want to, you know, fry my other bits. Wow. This really, um, it just keeps slipping out on me. These are not the best for long-term connections. Um, but, uh, in the short term. So let me plug this in. So basically what I've got here is just a, a little device that's a speaker. 
um, and it's it's got a little ampli amplification capability, um, but aside from that, it does not have a preamp. I am not going into a mic in. If you're going into a, something that says mic in, it's already got a preamp built in. Um, so this that would be not be a good test for this. So plug your ears. That's the feedback you get if you don't use the resistor. If you've tried building these mics from scratch before, and then uh, you, you've encountered that for sure, because that this is this follows the logic of signal out and it goes directly in but for whatever reason um it has something to do i don't know if with impedance or so, something like that anyway it gets into electrical terms that i'm not a, i'm not uh familiar all that much with um but anyway this is the workaround so now you can see it's touching so now let's test it out test 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 okay you should be able to hear it coming through the speaker um so that's the build. So, you know, you can decide how you want to do it. If you want to do it in something similar to this, or um, my recommendation is to solder it. Um, in the end, I'm always happy after I've soldered something. Um, and if you do go the route of soldering, I recommend uh, putting a little hot glue on the ends to um, keep the cables from breaking off. Because what I ended up doing was testing things out, a lot of bending, bending, and then it just snaps off. Um, so then, then it forces it to bend in the middle of the wire rather than right at um, the connection point. So hopefully that helped. If it does, uh, leave a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Take care. I'm out.